y'all. Welcome to another episode of Instill a Mother. If you are new here, my name is Yvette. I am the host, the hostess with the mostest. Okay. <laughs> How y'all week been going? You guys, I be so happy for Friday to come. Like for real, I be happy for Friday to come. But honestly, like lately, I just been feeling like Friday been coming a little bit too quick. Like, the way these weeks are flying by, it's almost scary. Like, for real, I don't know. We in October. We are midway through October already. The We are about to be in 2023. So, that is just when you sit and think about it, because it's like time just be flying by. That's a little scary to me, but I'm just glad that um, Friday is here this week. I am ready to just relax and do nothing okay I might do pumpkin carving with my kids this weekend because usually my seven-year-old goes with his dad on the weekend but his dad is going somewhere so he's going to be with me so I probably do pumpkin carving and just do a different like maybe cookies we might do a um I seen at Target they had like these Halloween houses so, um, you know, like gingerbread houses that you do for Christmas, but I've seen that they had Halloween houses. So we might do that. I don't know, child. I don't know. It depends on the vibe. It depends on the vibe that when kids is giving. If they giving bad, we ain't doing nothing. Okay? So that's what I plan on doing this weekend. But this week was definitely um overwhelming. <laughs> if you don't know, I'm currently doing Vlogtober. Um so I have been vlogging every day, editing every day. I just, it's been over. I'm not going to say overwhelming because it's definitely teaching me a lot, but it's just, it's worse November. <laughs> Look, I just complained about time moving too fast and now I'm saying, where's November? Like, girl, what do you want? But anyway, so that's what's going on with me this week. Um... Yeah, it really was the same old, same old, but I'm definitely proud of myself for keeping up with Vlogtober because y'all, since I started YouTube, I have not been like on a schedule. I have created schedules for myself and I have failed them every single week. So for me to be doing Vlogtober and keeping up with it, that means a lot to me. So that's what's up with me this weekend. And today I have to go get my kids. Usually... I don't have to pick my kids up until around like five-ish. But unfortunately, my mother is not able to get them. She usually gets them after for after school for me um, because she know I'll be working and stuff. So she's not able to get them today. So I have to speed this all up <laughs> so I can make sure I'm there to get them off the bus and not look like the bad parent that forgot about her kids. <laughs> Have y'all seen that meme on social media where they was like, when I become a mom, I... <laughs> like it was like the child or something calling the mom, like, mom, where you at? And then the mama was like, who is this? <laughs> y'all, I've been a mom for the longest and that will be me. Like I will be the one forgetting to pick up my child. Oh, anyway. So let's just go ahead and get into our first segment, y'all. Sweet and sour. Um, I will say my sweet is it being, I finally feel like it's definitely fall now. Now I will say fall came in. Like, I don't even think fall transition in. I think fall just was like summer fall. Like one day it was summer, one day it was fall. And it just seemed like, like time it'd be seven o'clock and it's already dark. And even though we go through this every single year, I don't know, like this year just feel a little different. Like, it just feel like it came a little quicker, unless I just wasn't paying attention. But I'm like, dang, like, I've been feeling tired. And it's crazy how, you know, sunlight can definitely have an effect on your mood as far as you being tired. Because I'd be, like, tired at 7 o'clock. And I'd be like, why am I so tired? It's still early. But it getting dark so early, it makes your body think that it's time to go to sleep. So, yeah so but I'm excited for fall fall is my favorite season of all it just makes me feel so alive y'all like I just love fall I love the holidays that come around it Halloween is my favorite holiday I don't know why I just 
I don't know. Like, I just love it. And I'm not even that type of person that really, like, like scary stuff like that. I don't like being scared. But I love Halloween. Maybe because I know it's not real. Maybe so. Because, baby, if somebody was running up to me with a knife, baby, listen, honey. <laughs> I'd be one of the people that trip or fall. <laughs> I just uh uh but I just been really having uh like it's just been lifting my mood even with my own we have an alarm system in the house and the alarm system like you know how sometimes it lets you choose your doorbell chime so for October it let me change it to different ones y'all let me play it for you because I have been so geeked about like for real I have been geeked about this um Everybody that comes to my house, like anytime that I have like something being delivered, they always be like, when I open the door, they be like, yo, your doorbell is high. And it's probably something so simple. Y'all probably like, Yvette, really you excited about that? But yes, y'all, when I seen that they was doing this, it made my day. Hold on, this is how it sound. <laughs> so... I was just so excited about that. My kids love it, especially the baby. Well, mainly Kaylani. Khalil don't play it, don't pay it no mind. When I, Khalil, mm, Khalil and Kaylani are my twins. They're one year old, one years old. But Kaylani, which is the girl, she loves it. Khalil, which is the boy, don't pay it no mind. So yeah. Um, as far as my sour, I will say, oh, this week, you guys, it was just like a like just like I mentioned in the beginning I was definitely like being consistent with vlogging and editing and making sure my vlogs were up but I was not consistent with eating right or going to the gym and even though every week I don't be consistent with eating right I do be consistent with going to the gym but this past week I really was not consistent with going to the gym I just feel like honestly what plays a part is me doing Vlogtober because I just been so busy, but I will say that's my sour because it's starting to really, really hit me like Yvette, like, come on girl, like how many more weeks can we go through this? How many more days can you continue to keep setting goals for yourself and you not reaching them? How many more weeks can you keep saying tomorrow? How many more weeks can you keep saying, oh, I'm going to start it on this day? How many more weeks can you say, oh, I'm going to start it after the holiday? Like you cannot, you cannot. So that was my sour because y'all, I'm sick of me. I am sick of me, honey. Like I am sick of going through this repetitive cycle week after week after week after week after week. And it's so crazy because a couple of months ago, literally something woke me up in my dream. Let me, matter of fact, y'all, I put it in my note. I put it in my notes. So I was sleep knocked and something just woke me up. And it's literally like, it sounded like my voice, honestly, but it was just like full, full. I could hear it talking to me. Um, June 28th, 2022. And the time on this note was 3.27 a.m. It literally said, you will never live the life you want if you keep putting off everything you need to do. Now, mind you, y'all, when I woke up from my sleep, to to me hearing this verbatim clear as day I tried to go back to sleep I woke up at three o'clock heard that tried to go back to sleep woke back up at 3 27 and something kept telling me Yvette put it in your notes put it in your notes put it in your notes like you cannot wait until the morning time you need to put this in your notes right now so I put it in my notes and like ever since then it was like me keep putting stuff off was beating me up for the longest for years but now I feel like it's really beating me up because it's like yo something really came to me and said girl like you keep putting this off you never gonna reach the life that you want to live and I just need to do better when it comes down to eating right and going to the gym you guys I know it's not all about having a specific look and stuff like that. But I do feel like when you learn to be disciplined with your body and what goes into your mouth, I feel like it trickles down to so many other things in life with learning discipline. So yeah, that was my sweet and sour for the week. <laughs> but we're going to do better. We're going to do better. Um, so what prompted this episode, you guys? So lately for the past couple of months, y'all, if you for, for also if you're watching visually, I know it looked like 
one of my tits is going to pop out at any moment, baby. But I keep trying to put this on my shoulders, but it just won't go. So listen, this is what we're doing, okay? I promise if it pop out, I'm going to edit it out so you won't even see it. But lately on social media, which you guys, I'm on social media every day. I create content. I'm constantly up there looking for inspiration or, you know, just different things, staying in the loop you know, the drill. So, but lately I've been seeing a lot of divorces and people breaking up on social media. I mean, it's been so many divorces and breakups. I had to ask myself, am I getting divorced? Like, baby, you're not even married. So what are you talking about? But (laughs) for real, like that's how many, it's just been like back to back to back. So one of the most recent divorces that really like hit me, why it hit me, I don't know, because It's like, girl, you don't know these people, but you know how sometimes you just feel like you kind of like grew up knowing a specific couple and it just makes you think similar to like if a celebrity passes away or something. It's just like, oh, my goodness, like such and such passed away. But recently it was announced that Tia Maori and Corey Hardick, Hardrick is getting a divorce. They've been married for 14 years and they share two kids together. So. Okay, they were getting a divorce, right? So then Tia Maori, she posted something on her social media about starting a new chapter and things like that. But Corey Hardrick, which is the person she's divorcing, her husband, um, he just did like a heart emoji with a little sprinkle. And she commented back, I love you with a heart. So one of the blogs screenshotted it and posted it. And the caption was a little toxic or gnaw. And immediately I was like, why is that considered toxic? Like, this is somebody that she was married to for 14 years. And I'm pretty sure she has known him longer than 14 years if they've been married 14 years. And they share two children together. And I'm I'm pretty sure they've been through so much together. And we are so used to having a toxic environment when it comes to you not dealing with somebody anymore we don't even know what a healthy and mature relationship looks like when it comes down to um, people that you have children with or even someone that you were in love with it just really blew my mind that really we 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 think that and I'm not when I say we I mean me also because let me tell (laughs) y'all When I be done with somebody, I erase them out of my membrane. Like, who? What? Who? Like, I told y'all in the first episode when I was pregnant with my first child, when my my older son, when I was pregnant and I was done with his daddy, somebody asked me, ain't you such and such, baby mama? Who? No, I'm not. His whole baby in my stomach. But... It is so the norm to not deal with somebody that you have a child with once you're done with them, or it's such a norm to have a toxic relationship or for y'all to be mean to each other and, you know, for y'all to just not show love to each other or act like this is not somebody that you used to be in love with, somebody that you used to lay down and have sex with, somebody that you shared your goals with, your dreams. You know, this is this is somebody that was at one point that person. And, of course, I know that there's different situations to where, you know, depending on the situation, like say, for instance, if you're in an abusive situation Or, you know, it's just something crazy where this person is like constantly disrespecting you and such and such. You know, of course, the situation is going to change. The circumstances are going to change. But my thing is, what if everything just ended in a healthy way? What if you just outgrew each other? Or even if, you know, maybe somebody cheated, even if that was the case, you know, are you looking at it from your perspective or are you looking at it in its totality? Because, Sometimes it's not just, most of the time, it's not just one party. It might look at it in that moment, look like it in that moment, but it's usually not just one party where they're the fault of it all. And honestly, when I seen, you know, Tia respond back, I love you, you know, that made my heart warm because I'm like, that's how you do it. That's how you co-parent or that's how you still show love to somebody that you've been with for so long and they share children together and 
it's like and and I'm talking about myself also, but when you have a child with someone and then you decide not to be with that person anymore, like if you treat them a certain type of way or talk about them in a certain type of way or decide to just be nasty towards them or feel like you can't do simple communication, it's not hurting anybody. I promise you it's not hurting nobody but the child. That's it. That is the person that is facing the reper repercussions of y'all grown adult ass actions like it's the child and i like it i just now was able to learn that you guys just now able to learn that like honestly it even took my friend to ask me like well yvette why can't you go you know somewhere with such and such like what is the problem? Like, just because you're not with them no more, you can't go somewhere with that person. And of course, I feel like that there are certain boundaries because when you still have feelings attached to somebody, you know, it's certain boundaries that you just can't cross, especially if you are in another relationship or even if you aren't like, say, for instance, you just know this relationship is not for you anymore you know this is the person that you do not need to be with. You know, don't keep putting yourself into specific situations or doing specific things where you know your feelings are going to keep, you know, being attached. It's like, you know, use discernment in that. <clears throat> but when you get to the point where you're completely done with the person, you have no feelings attached in that manner, it's like, why can't you do certain things? And I'll use myself for an example. When it comes down to my son's dad, um, which one don't matter. But when it comes down to my son's dad, like when I was done with him, y'all, I hated this man. Do y'all hear me? I, I could not even call him and have a simple conversation. Every conversation we had on the phone was arguing. Then when my son would go with him, I would try to call him and check up on my son, but he wouldn't answer the phone. Then I would feel some type of way because then I'm going days without talking to my son because why? He's a baby. He doesn't have a phone, so I got to go through his dad. And... So things will be going on with my son, for example, like he might catch a cold and I didn't know about it because why me and his dad hated each other guts. So we weren't in communication with each other at all. Then when things came around like holidays, it's like, OK, we will always fight over. Uh, uh, I'm having him on this holiday. Uh, uh, no, I'm having him. No, you had him last holiday. No, you know what I'm saying? So we will always have an argument with that because it's like, OK, well, how are we supposed to do this if. You know, we're not together. We're not going to go to each other family homes. You know what I'm saying? How are we supposed to do this? But honestly, you guys, it wasn't hurting anybody but my son. That's it. Like, so now me and his dad has a, I'll say better. It's not 100% perfect, but it's a better relationship. Like, at first, at first when it took for... You know, it it came a moment where it wasn't necessarily, um, like, I was cool. I wasn't the one being bitter, but, you know, he still had some ill feelings towards me. So when it came down, once he once we were both able to, to get over each other completely, we were able to have conversations. So when he would call me and be like, hey, what's up, Yvette? Or, like, just have a normal conversation. I'm like, what's up? What you want? He was like, damn, like, I'm just calling to have a conversation, asking you how you doing. Like, damn, we can't be cool. We can't be friends. And I'm thinking in my mind, like, cool, friends. What do we need to be cool or what do we need to be friends for? And even, I, I honestly, you guys, I feel like really it's no need for us to be friends because it's like I have moved on. I have had kids after you. I have a partner. So it's like. What do we need to be cool for? You know, because at the end of the day, it's like just showing respect to the person I'm with. I'm not about to be sitting here doing X, Y, and Z with you. But, you know, it shouldn't be to the point where we're on the phone and I can't even ask how you doing or, you know, just, you know, just be nice. Like, just be nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was one point where he had my son with him and I, you know, told him to have a good day. And he just was like, this can't be that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, like when we're done with the person we have a child with, we just cut them off completely. And unfortunately, it can't be like that. Like, 
that's what goes into, you know, people saying, oh, I got a bitter baby mama. She keeping me away from my kids because I don't want to be with her and blah, blah, blah. Now, on the other flip side of that, I do feel like, you know, you can't just outside of the kids, you can't be disrespecting somebody, whether that's physically, physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse like you cannot be doing that and thinking that somebody just gonna be kumbaya with you or gonna be cordial with you like that's not how it's gonna be you know I feel like even if there are kids involved or not you just need to be respectful to the other party you know it's just like be respectful you know you do have to put feelings aside as far as if we're not going to be together. Okay. We have to put those feelings aside, but you cannot be disrespectful and think that you're going to get a positive response out of that. So going back to, you know, Tia Maori and Corey Hard Hardrick, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. We don't know, but the fact that they're able to still say, I love you. And somebody thinking that that's toxic because they're saying, I love you, but they had just announced a divorce. So are you saying that the divorce means that they don't love the person anymore? Because that's how I thought about it. That's how I thought that, okay, I'm done with you immediately. It ain't no more. I love you. It ain't no more. Oh, I still got feelings for you. It ain't no more of none of that. And honestly, that's not unconditional love and that's what makes me think like did I ever love these things like did I ever love them because I don't think so but <laughs> it really took my friend to teach me that she just you know explained to me that a lot of the times we don't have unconditional love for the people we're in a relationship with or not even just the people we're in a relationship with with people in general whether that's a friend family like we don't have unconditional love because unconditional love truly means I love this person without condition meaning whatever they do whatever they do whatever whatever you could think of under the sun whatever they do I can still say I love this person and a lot of the time we can't say that we can't say that and I will be that person to say I can't say that like you know, I, I will always express to my friend, like, I don't like when he do this or he do, you know, like, why is he this way and things like that. And she will always say, Yvette, you have to learn to love him regardless of how he is as a person. And she said, I'm not telling you that you have to be with him, but you have to learn to love and accept somebody for who they are. Because if you cannot love them through it all, you love them with condition and is that truly love? Because love is supposed to be unconditional, meaning it doesn't mean that if you're you're this way and only this way, that's the only time I'm going to love you. Like, no. So I feel like, you know, a lot of us, including myself, need to reevaluate what love truly is because even if you aren't with the person that you ha you're having a child with, that doesn't mean that you can't just show love to them, be nice to them, have a friendship. It doesn't have to be y'all hanging out. You know what I'm saying? But just having a friendship of being nice. Like, how was your day? What's wrong? You going through something? You need my help? Like, what can I do for you? Because at the end of the day, we still have a child together. And you, like, your child having one type of lifestyle at one place and then a completely different lifestyle in another place. Like, for example, if I'm over here living lavish and then I see that, you know, the person that I have a child with is going through something tremendously. So when my child goes over there, it's complete. They're having a completely different lifestyle or going through whatever their parent is going through. Is that not affecting my child? Yes. And at the end of the day, it's the child that matters, not y'all two grown, immature adults. I'm talking to me, me. I'm the immature adult. <laughs> but you guys, I promise you, y'all, I used to be so childish. Like, I, I, at one point, I walked into the place that my child's dad was working. Y'all, I walked in there at like I didn't see him. He could have been on fire. And I wouldn't even spit on them. Like, that's how I felt. And I just had to truly, like, accept the fact of, like, 
okay, Yvette, like this is the person that you chose to have a child with. At the end of the day, that hate that you giving, that hate that you spewing off is not helping the situation at all you have felt this way for years and the person still is the same way so you just sitting here harboring all this hate inside of you for what for why why are you doing that you know so it's like I feel like whether you're the mom or the father I feel like if you just did more internal work within it would help a lot and I mean that even in a way of if you're dealing with a deadbeat, because trust, I've been there, still there. Feel like I'm always gonna be there. But I really had to, you know, just take accountability. Honestly, y'all, that's what it really took for me to do. I just had to take accountability. At the end of the day, regardless of what the situation was, regardless of if I was a minor at the time, didn't know no better, just dumb, dumb, dumb dumb even if I didn't know no better at the time at the end of the day I still decided to have a baby with this person okay regardless of what that brought with it I cannot keep harboring these feelings for years and years down the road it's not doing anything but hurting myself in this situation I'll say that because I don't never talk about my like I don't never talk bad about my kids dad in front of them Whatever I got to say, I say that to my friends, <laughs> family, mama, daddy. Like, you know, they'll know about it, but my kids, no. But, you know, it's just, is it stressful? Yes. Do I feel a certain type of way? Yes. But even when you are feeling dealing with a deadbeat, you just have to realize that the person is going to be what they are. Like, you cannot change them. And if they are not willing to change themselves on behalf of themselves and behalf of that they have a child, you know, why would you want that around your child anyway? You know, if they don't have your child's best interest at heart, why would you want that around your child anyway? You know, I really used to feel a certain type of way, like, oh, he don't come get my son. He don't spend time and stuff like that. But when I sat back and thought about it, do I really want this child? Do I really want this person as a influential being on my child not really so it's like you know I just had to get out of my head get get out of my emotions and just take it for what it is and deal with it with logic and I feel like a lot of couples and a lot of people when it comes down to you having a child with somebody we don't know how to be that way because let's say for example you are with someone and this is someone you're madly in love with and you have a child with and y'all decide not to be together it doesn't even have to be on some disrespectful things y'all just cannot like y'all are just not compatible you're just not compatible so now now that you're deciding to not be with that person now, it's a flip of the switch of where I hate this person. Don't talk to me. Don't call me. Don't you block the, all of these things. And it's not doing. So now it just made things 10 times worse and it's not doing anything, but making it harder to co-parent with this child, with this person that you have kids with, which is not going to do anything but roll over to affecting the kids when the kids don't have anything to do with this well, I ain't got nothing to do. Like, because some parents are just better off not together let's call a thing a thing like some parents just don't need to be together like y'all just better apart because you being together is too toxic for the child and y'all let me tell y'all everything that I'm saying I'm not just telling I'm not speaking this from me just trying to teach somebody else. I'm speaking this from experience, things that I have went through. So, I, I, I yeah, just just know that I'm not just saying this without experience. It's like when you are having a when you have children around toxic situations like that, it is it's not good at all. And honestly, it took for me to have a daughter. To where, like, if me and her dad was having an argument, like, even now, if me and him start raising our voices at each other or, you know, just having an argument, she immediately, immediately starts crying. So, you know, I feel like with me and him both, when we saw the effect that it was having on, you know, the kids and, you know, even though we... 
you know how sometimes the kids might not show that it's having an effect on them so you really don't consciously try to change it but seeing that she was a baby and she didn't even want to see us argue or like if we're even playing with each other and just raising our voice she doesn't she she immediately starts crying because she doesn't want to be around that we both as a collective as parents immediately change that like you know it, it definitely took some trial and error I will say that but now if we gonna have an argument baby or if we gonna talk about something we gonna do that you know behind closed doors to where the kids are not around or but we try not to even make a toxic environment anymore at all as far as that arguing so it's just it plays a factor as far as you know your you doing all of those things around your kids because kids are affected by that like even still to this day years ago you know every every couple please don't come up here acting like couples don't argue or parents don't argue or whatever but you know even with back in the day like years back y'all I mean like over 20 years back I can still remember my parents maybe having an argument so that, those things stick with your child and you know it just really I feel like we just need to show more love towards the people that we have children with I know it's hard baby listen baby I know it's hard okay I know it's hard because as soon as my baby daddy called me hello what's up what you need okay or he'll text me good morning blah blah I answer the question, don't even say good morning, but like, dang, you can't say good morning back. No, I cannot. What do you want? Like, that's that's how I used to feel. And, you know, just with growing up and just with, you know, maturing and just with evolving, I just realized that that was not healthy, y'all. That was not healthy at all. So, you know, I don't feel like that is toxic for you to show love to the person that you were in a relationship with especially if you have kids with them or just you know I don't think that it's toxic at all I feel like that's what we need to do I feel like as a collective that's what we should learn to do to even if we are not together anymore just still show love now you still do have those situations to where some people just don't know how to receive that and they feel like it's something more than what it is but no like I'm still done with you we still done but just show love because I promise you in the long run, it's going to help, you know, especially if you have kids, it's going to help the child more than anything. I felt like everything as far as his birthday, I couldn't celebrate it with his dad because I'm like, we not together. So why do we need to do anything together? He could do whatever he going to do on his end and I can do whatever I'm going to do on my end. You know what I'm saying? But it does not have to be that way. It really doesn't. It, even if you are in a relationship, it don't have to be that way. I'm like, I don't even care if the person I'm with and my child's dad communicate with each other. I don't care. I would rather for them to have a relationship. And I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like be cordial with each other than being mean. Like, or just acting like they can't even exist in each other's presence because it's like, what is that going to resolve? So that's my outlook on it. But I also want to... so. I also want to talk about something else, but this is also going to go in towards the last segment um, where I tell you guys something that I read this week that resonates in this episode. So I'm just going to go to it on my phone. Okay, so a couple episodes back, I told you guys about this app called Teledipity where it gives you different... Um, is based upon numerology so you just enter your name and your date of birth and it tells you pretty much everything about your life child but recently one of my friends she got an email from me and she was like hey did you receive this email and I was like no so she sent it to me and y'all it really was an eye-opener and it was you know kind of based upon this topic at hand so I wanted to discuss it with you guys because I'm like I'm not 100% on how I feel about it but I do feel like it makes sense so let's talk about it. So it was talking about um, one of the things that it, it was talking about love. And one of the things that it stated is a person who is suitable for our child is almost never, though we cannot realize it at the time, very suitable for us. 
It says the lover who delivers the perfect offspring and thus becomes the obsessive focus of our will to life is rarely the person who will make us happy over a lifetime. Love casts itself on persons who, apart from the sexual relation, would be hateful, contemptible. Y'all, please forgive me. I know I messed that word up. And even abhorrent to the lover. But the will of the species is so much more powerful than that of the individual that the lover shuts his eyes to all the qualities repugnant to him, overlooks everything, misjudges everything, and binds himself forever to the object of his passion. He is thus completely infatuated by that delusion which vanishes as soon as the will of the species is satisfied and leaves behind a detested partner for life. You guys, so what I got from that was the person that you have a child with is not going to be the person that you're meant to be with for the rest of your life. And I know that it's going to be so debatable because I know it's people that have been out there with their children, you know, with their parents been together for years and years and years and everything like that. So I want to add this other thing hold on is this lesson telling us to rise above our will to life and pick a mate that makes us happy instead yes and no if your parents were never good for each other but you're grateful that they came together to have you you already understand the dichotomy of the perfect mistake in other words some mistakes are meant to be you shouldn't always try to control your will to life what you can control is the stories you tell yourself when that instinct is activated. Stories like, I will never feel about anyone the way that I felt about him. She treats me like shit, but I cannot live without her. It has been four years and I haven't stopped thinking about him. That means I will never be happy with anyone else. So long as you understand those stories for the delusion that they are, you will be fine. You shouldn't always try to understand your will to life. What you can understand is the difference between unavoidable madness and its far more dangerous cousin, avoidable madness. Unavoidable madness is when your will to life binds you to a good person who isn't right and won't work for the long run. You'll go crazy, but you'll be safe. This madness will give you powerful memories and an overall positive experience, regardless of how long it takes. Oh, I'm sorry, regardless of how long it lasts, a week or 10 years. Avoidable madness is when your will to life binds you to someone who harms you mentally, emotionally, spiritually, or physically. You'll go crazy and it will only subtract from your life. The memories will not be good. You will spend 10 hours feeling like crap for every two minutes you feel sort of nice. You may still think it's love, but the corporate will be your will to life. And when it's talking about will to life, it's pretty much saying that we attract ourselves to certain people because of the will to life. So to pretty much create offsprings, kids. So that intrigued me so much, you guys, because when I was having kids and I decided not to be with the person that I was with anymore, of course, it was many other things that made me not want to be with them. But I noticed it was a pattern between a lot of people and especially in this day and age. I don't feel like it was so present back then because I feel like women were more prone to stay with someone even if they weren't happy. But I feel like now women are, you know, we, we will leave much easier. But I just always wonder, like, why does it seem like every time somebody have a child with somebody else, then the relationship go to shit? And now that I am still with the person that I have kids with, I will say our relationship got so much harder after having kids because I just felt like everything changed, like, everything changed everything changed like it just wasn't the same it just you know it just wasn't the same and we are trying to still grow through it and we're still trying to you know figure out a balance but I just feel like when you have a child with someone, I feel like it's no more just about the relationship. And I feel like you start seeing different qualities and different traits in the person you had a child with. And they may no longer make you happy in the way that they made it 
prior to you having a baby with them. Like, how many times do you hear a woman say, oh, I'm trying to have his baby? Or, or a man say, oh, I'm trying to, um, what they be saying? Trap her or whatever. No, not trap her. I don't know. Whatever they be saying. Trap her, please. That's what it's called. But, you know, they say those things. Then when you have an actual child with the person, it's like completely different. Like, just everything changes. So it really made me think, you know, when that came, when I got that email and it said most of the time the person you have offspring with is not the person you're meant to be with for the rest of your life. And to a certain extent, I truly believe that. That sounds so bad, so bad, so bad. But I just feel like a lot of things change after you have kids with someone. And I also feel like even feelings that you have towards that person changes as well. But like it also mentioned, I feel like that we decide to stay with certain people when we have children with them because it's safe. You know what I'm saying? They're not harming us physically, emotionally, spiritually. Like they're not doing anything that is truly harming us. So what other reason would we have to not want to be with this person? You know, if it was on the other side of where someone was doing these things, then yeah, it would be completely different. But you know, you feel safe with that person. You feel safe. And even if it do come an instance to where that person may cheat or start doing or bad at communication, different things like that is so much more harder to leave because it's like, why am I leaving? And that sounds so bad, y'all. I know, Listen, don't come for me because I know it sounds bad. I know. I know it sounds bad. I know it do. But it just made me think. <laughs> so I'm going to end it with that, you guys. And I just encourage I just encourage anybody out there, if you have children and you're no longer with the person that you have children with, just show a little bit more love if it's called for. Like, I'm not about to call up a deadbeat and show him love. But, like, if he try to come in contact with me for whatever reason, you know, just me not – spewing hate to him shows a it's just it comes when you start doing internal work and just start maturing and realizing that you can't change that person you treating them a certain type of way is not going to change them either so what do you rather spew out negativity or positivity and me hell a couple of months ago wanted to spit out negativity but you know now I'm starting to learn more like okay even though I don't like this person is nothing wrong with still showing love. So that's it for this episode, you guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you're watching on YouTube, let's chat below. Let me know what you think, especially with the last segment on what I was talking about when they were saying that you most of the time you're not with the person you have a child with. Because I feel like that's interesting. I'm eager to know somebody else's thoughts on it. So that's it for this episode, you guys. And I will see you next Friday. Bye. <laughs>